When my pants come down and my nuts come out and my legs go numb and I fall to the ground, please walk around me and not stomp me in the dick tonight. Anyways, so, um, I don't know why. Sometimes I'm just going through Facebook and it just, I somebody asks, somebody asks a stupid question and it just, it sets me off and I have to go into this big long fucking tangent. And I, I know everybody does that. Like sometimes you, you'll see somebody, they'll, they'll post something political against what you believe and you got to go onto this rampage and tell them exactly what is up well i get that and i don't like to fall into that trap but i did today um i don't know if the kid's an atheist or what or whatever or just asking a legitimate question i don't really care <clears throat> but he asked a question about this is a biblical question if the bible says that God created Adam and Eve, and Adam and Eve had two sons, Cain and Abel. And Cain killed Abel and was basically thrown out of the garden. It says that he went and married a woman named Nod, Node, Nude, whatever the fuck her name is, and had children with her from another city. So, how is any of that possible? Well... Probably the easiest explanation is that they had multiple children. They had daughters who weren't mentioned. Um, probably even had other sons that weren't mentioned. Probably had a bunch of fucking kids that weren't mentioned. But I think a far more interesting, like a sci-fi uh, concept, is that... Because you have to understand what's going on at that time. Um, and I don't think a lot of people take consideration of it. I mean, I'm talking what potentially, I'm talking from a sci-fi perspective, like, what if, kind of a, you know, whatever. Um, because you have to understand what's going on. Like, just based upon the narrative, whether you believe it or not, whatever. But let's just take the narrative as it is. Okay, so there's a god who created Adam and Eve in a garden. Okay. Now the garden is definitely separate from the rest of the world. Just based upon that. He created a garden and put people in it. Okay. We know later that there's a serpent who's outside the garden. Looking into the garden. So is the garden walled off? Is it whatever? I don't know. To me, I think a more interesting sci-fi concept is, is if, the, well, the Bible says God is light. So if he is light, we know that the closer you get to the speed of light, the more time slows down. It also says that God dwelt and walked among the people in the garden, you know, walked among them. He dwelt with them. So if God is light and he is there, then he essentially would create a time dilation field. A bubble, if you will, around said garden. So the garden itself would be either in a very, very slowed down time, almost almost like entering a black hole in a way. Because the closer you get to a black hole, the more time slows down. Of course, everything gets ripped, you know, your entire, everything just rips apart, but that's neither here nor there. <clears throat> so if he is dwelling among them and you're close to God, then you are outside of time, or at least slowed down to a very, Massive degree. Well, everything around the bubble, outside the bubble, is going at a normal clip. So you could literally have human race be 10,000 years old, or whatever, while the rest of the universe is millions of years old. Which I think is interesting. Now, is that really far-fetched? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, if you're going to believe there's a God, well... Is that really that far-fetched? Because we do know that the garden itself was closed off. It was. The, the snake was looking in. The serpent was looking in, saying, guess what? Fuck you. Okay, he wasn't coming into the garden, necessarily. No, I don't know. And we do know that later, the garden was closed off, and Adam and Eve could not enter it again. They could, not, they could no longer go into it. There, something like a... a it was an angel with a fiery sword or something, I don't know. Which means one of two things. Either it was on a different plane of existence, like in another dimension, which is possible. Um, 
Or, you know, I don't know. Because it seemed like if it's here on Earth right now, then one of two places. It's either in the Arctic somewhere under 200 miles of ice, or it's up in the Himalayas somewhere under a bunch of ice, or somewhere, you know, it's somewhere under ice somewhere, or it's in a different dimension. Now, I don't know how all that works, but whatever. Now, again, I think it's an interesting concept. I don't know if it, I'm not going to sit there and say it's the way it is. I'm just saying it's kind of cool. I mean, it is kind of cool. If God is light and you are next to God, then everything around you, time will slow down or cease, to, you know, to be. It will stop. Again, we know this is a fact. This is a scientific fact. The closer you move to, to, toward light... Now, what if you are in the light? I don't know. I don't know. Because if you're with God, then you're in the light. Because I don't necessarily think human bodies can travel that fast. So, like, if we were to do, a, like, a spaceship or, or something, like a warp engine or something, <clears throat> we would have to come up with something much different. Because, like I said, I don't think the physical body could go through that kind of speed. I mean, just, you know, we could barely we could, we could barely do, uh, you know, 6 Gs. We can barely take that, much less, you know, a gazillion Gs up the ass. I mean, you, you, literally, it would melt your face. Like, your face would be up your ass. I mean, that's basically what it would be. You'd be your, literally, your face would just, just, just peel off and, and fold into your asshole. Okay, going that fast. So I don't think that, but if you were... In the light, and the light itself was moving, I don't know. Because I always thought if, if we were to do a spaceship like that, we would have to create some sort of field, some sort of pocket where the people are actually, like in the cabin, would have to be like a stationary thing while the ship itself is moving at a certain speed. Now, I don't know how you would do something like that, if, if you could even do something like that. But like if we could create like a, a cocoon, again where the people are, and could get a vehicle to move that fa or something to move that fast, then maybe you could do it. But you'd have to have, like I said, a cocoon. Well, if the light and God itself is that cocoon, then yes, you could be outside of time, or at least slow down to a very, very, very high degree. So again, at the end of the day, you could. Theoretically, theoretically, and it legitimately theoretically, not just like wishful thinking bullshit. Okay, you could theoretically have a time dilation field that God Himself created. Um, because I mean, think about that. Think about what that would entail. Now, what's the point of the fallen angels? So we know the fallen angels were there. Now, what's the point of them? The, their point is basically to bastardize everything God creates. So if if God does something, Satan wants to do the exact same thing, but only 180. So, okay, like, there's Christ, there's Antichrist. There's good, there's bad. It's, it's like the exact opposite of what God created. Well, if God created human beings, what do you think Satan wanted to do? You're telling me they can't mass-produce deranged DNA? You're telling me they can't fuck with the DNA in any way, shape, matter, or form? If they can take human form, and the Bible says they can, you're telling me they can't do stuff like that? Like, again, you see all these dinosaurs, and they have these weird monstrosities, and the horns sticking out of their dicks, and, you know, six feet, and three-fourths of an eye, and it's just, these weird, like, you see these fish and shit, too, that's another one. So you're telling me that they couldn't do that? Now, again, we're getting in a little weird, like, we can't prove that they exist. Well, actually, we can't prove that angels and God and all that does exist, but we can prove that if they do exist, they can exist, if that makes sense. Because if we're talking waves and particles, if their waves are 180 degrees outside of ours, then yes, some, a being like that can exist. It absolutely can exist, based upon that. And yes, it can do exactly what 
you know, the idea is that, yes, there could be an unseen being right here, right now, in front of me, which would be just creepy as fuck, and yeah, they could theoretically move stuff around, too. They could. Based upon, you know, basic science. I wouldn't say basic science, a little, maybe it's a little more complex than that, but you get my point. Now, whether they actually do exist, that's a whole other story, but if they do, they can, if that makes any sense. It, it does, it actually makes some perfect sense. Is that we don't know they exist, but if they do, they can exist scientifically. There's there's scientific uh, concepts that says yeah they can exist, they can do that stuff. It's not like oh well you know he just grew a third dick and started fucking everybody and you know a whole new race was born. You know no, well I mean I suppose it could, but whatever. You know what I mean? There's actual legitimacy to it. Because a lot of people have this idea that, oh, the Bible and science don't don't mesh. I disagree. I completely disagree. I think science needs to prove the Bible, and the Bible proves science. I think they're one and the same. Now, we take it as... Like, a lot of people, oh, flat earth and blah, blah, blah. Okay, fine. Fine. But could there have been some truth to flat earth? I don't know. I mean, if we're in a holographic universe, what what if we are legitimately in a holographic computerized thing? Take all what everything I just said, throw it in the trash. If we are in a holographic universe to the point where we are literally a program, this physical world is a program somewhere. Then you could absolutely have Adam and Eve ten thousand years old. With the rest of the universe, millions of years. Think about a freaking day one update on a video game. Now, there are times when they actually add in entire sections of a game after the fact. And it's as if they had always been there. But they weren't. But yet, they are. Think about that. Now, again, if we are a computer program, then yeah, you could have six days of creation. You have six updates. That's six days. Now, however long it took in between those days, it's irrelevant. You know? Because, think about it. I'll, I'll take Destiny as an example. Okay. You start out with Vanilla Destiny, and then six months later, four months later, whatever the fuck it was, you add in some new content. Well, that content was technically, as you're looking at the overall picture, those new areas were always there. In fact... A lot of them, a lot of times, people were having fun because you could you could uh, push through the wall. You you basically use your little vehicle and you could kind of like jump off and jump off into the like through the wall. And if you do, there's like whole areas that were sort of blocked off when you could see. They're actually very cool. And you could see like uh, like a potential cave or where there's going to be something new. And then all of a sudden they they put it in. They actually put it into the, the fucking game and there's a door and you go through the door and there's a whole new area well technically that was always supposed to be there even though it wasn't programmed into the game at the very beginning so if you're looking at it from that point of view like okay we got this thing that's 100 million years old but we got this other thing that's like 5 minutes old but that thing that's supposed to be 5 minutes old it was supposed to always be there from day one so again I'm talking from a holographic universe concept and I'm taking holographic universe in the very simplified term, like, if, like, again, like a computer program. If we are a computer program, um, and you do see ones and zeros everywhere you look, I mean, you do. You break everything down in science down to the base level, it's ones and zeros. I mean, so you can take it for what it's worth. Now, I don't know what to make of that, personally. But again, you can have it both ways. You can have it, a, you know, a physical thing that just happened, and you know, the whole light concept and the time dilation field, or you can have just it's a computer program. Which, I mean, if you think about that, that's kind of weird because when they program in new stuff, that stuff has technically always been here. So, there could be new stuff right now that's happening, that's being programmed in, that 
we're we're discovering because like there's this weird stuff, especially with the uh, Mandela effect concept. Now some of it I agree with, some of it is kind of creepy to me because. I'm telling you right now, Kit Kat had a fucking dash. You can't tell me that. You can't tell me it didn't. You can't tell me it didn't. The Bible's got some, some questionable shit, like the lion lay down with the lamb, is now wolf lay down with the lamb, which is fucked up. Uh, wine skins are now wine bottles, which they didn't have fucking bottles back then. Okay, it was... It was always... You know, one thing or the other. Whatever. I don't want to get into that stuff. But I, I, some of it's a little creepy because I remember things a certain way. Well, you just misremembered. I don't misremember things, motherfucker. I don't. You know I have the fucking steel trap of an asshole here. I remember shit from 1990-fucking-two. Somebody spitting in the spaghetti sauce at the fucking thing. Dude, you know I remember shit, so fuck you. I know for a fact Kit Kat had a fucking dash because every time you pull out those little sticks, you break one off, it had the word Kit Kat with a dash and it had like an indentation. And I remember biting off right at the K and then I, then I kind of run my tongue through the little dash. I remember and I went, <laughs> I did that as a joke and I remember that, licking the dash. So don't fucking tell me that motherfucker never had a dash in the shape because when I look at it, it looks, it looks weird today. It looks completely weird. I can't even get over the fact that it... You know, and again, Curious Fucking George. That's another motherfucker. That cocksucker had a tail and you can't tell me otherwise. Because this, story, this shit doesn't make sense. I talked about this before. I'm going to go through it again just because I'm 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 on the fucking I'm on I'm on the I'm on the 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 road to hell here and I'm going to tell you I'm going to tell you how it is. Curious George makes no damn sense today because if the fucker doesn't have a tail then what's the point? The whole point was you open up the fucking book and I had the book and I remember this shit. My mother had she bought me all those uh golden books, gold whatever the fuck they were. And they had a bunch of Curious George books. We had the highlights. My mother bought all that stuff when I was a kid. And I remember Curious fucking George hanging from his tail. He was hanging from his tail. He would hang from it. He would. I remember that. You can't tell me it didn't happen. Because you'd open up the book, and I remember the exact image. You had the, the man in the yellow hat, and he's walking. And you see like a profile of him on, on the right page. He's walking. And there's the crease. And on the other page was um, a couch. I even think there was a woman in there, if I remember correctly. There was the man in the yellow hat, and I think a woman, I want to say. Um, okay, that I don't remember completely. But you see the freaking couch, and the man in the yellow hat's thinking, with a smile on his face, where's Curious George? And it's an empty couch, and it's like, well, that makes no sense. Now, you see his tail coming out from underneath it or from behind it, because he's fucking around behind the couch. That makes more sense. Just logically, it makes more sense. So it's such a, oh, he doesn't have a tail. Now think about it. He doesn't have a tail, so he's hiding behind the couch. And you see the man in the yellow hat looking at a blank couch, just, you know, random couch. And he's like, where's Curious George? I don't know. He ain't on the couch. <laughs> am I supposed, what am I supposed to infer from that? What, 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 what was, it, was it in a crack den somewhere? Smoking it up? What What am I supposed to... What are we supposed to infer from this? And the, the motherfucker's standing there smiling, got the little hat, little yellow vest, and he's like, Hey, where's Gary George? It, it's an empty room with just a couch in it. Now I'm just like, what? Uh, I'm sorry, that's... No, 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 no. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And there's other stuff too, and I don't feel like getting into all that stuff. Because it's creepy. It, it, it just does not feel like my universe, dude. It does not feel like my universe. I literally, honest to Christ, and I'm being dead serious when I say this. I feel like I have went to sleep one day, woke up in an alternate universe. Like, this does not feel like my home. I want to go home, dude. I want to go home. I do. Like, there are certain things that used to be, like, really good, and now they're not. And it's, it's just things are this discombobulated bullshit, okay? And I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about that. I really don't. I mean, there, there was a time when Halo was, was like, a system seller. It's not. 
It was a time Mass Effect was awesome. It's not. They've ruined it. This this liberal SJW warrior bullshit has ruined. It ruined Halo. It ruined Mass Effect. It's ruined countless fucking video games. It's ruined movies. It's ruined comic books. It's ruined uh, Star Wars. Fucking A, don't even get me started. I'm sorry, that bugs me. Now, you want to tell a stupid tweener story about some loser fucking Hispanic chick that is just completely worthless at life, but we want to tell a story because we want the worthless worthless Hispanic chicks to have a a superhero to to fall back on. Fine, tell me a goddamn story that's actually intelligent. Don't sit there and focus all your freaking energy on, oh, well, let's just make her a female minority and that's okay and everything else is cool. No. No, no, you tell a fucking story, asshole. You tell a story. That's what you're paid to do. You tell you were paid to tell me a story that makes fucking sense. Make me care about this bitch. I don't care that she's female. I don't care. Oh, we got to have like now they're going to do female Indiana Jones. First off, it's called Tomb Raider, motherfucker. It's called Laura Goddamn Cross. Fuck you. Fuck you, Spielberg, you asshole. Oh, female Indiana Jones. No. 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 Just like female Ghostbusters. No. Well, you just don't like women. That has nothing to do with it, you ignorant fuck. I don't like people who shit on the source material because they want to make a political fucking uh, statement. I got your political statement. Bend over, fucker. Anyway, I don't want to get into that. But we see it all the time. This universe is fucked up. It is. It's literally fucked up. We are living in a, in a world... No, listen, we are living in a world that... No, look, I made a joke. I made a joke about, quote-unquote, the PC fags getting uppity about things people say. And what happened? Facebook, they gave me a 24-hour ban where I couldn't go on their service for 24 hours because I used the word fag. Yet I can say Donald Trump is a fucking piece of shit. I hope he dies, he eats shit, and goes sucks the fuck. I can say that about any politician, Republican or Democrat. No problem, but say fag? Oh, 24 hour ban. Kiss my balls. Well, eh, what a safe place for people. First off, if you're that hurt, if you're that butt hurt over the fact that I said fag, you probably shouldn't be taking dick up your ass. That's all I got to say on that. You know? I mean, seriously, you're going to get that butt hurt over me saying fag, but yet you take a stiff one up your fucking ass 24-7. Again, this is the world we live in. This is the world we live in. How am I supposed to deal with this world? This is not the world that I, I, I grew up in. This is not the world I want to be in. And I'm not even saying that like in a Donald Trump's world, oh, we need to go back to like the 1930s and 1950s where everybody's sleeping in different beds and, you know, mom and her kerchief and dad and his little long stockings. No, fuck that shit. We're not talking Glenn Beck uh, utopia here. Fuck that. I'm talking about, I just want to go back to when it was sane, okay, when the universe was sane. Like, I shouldn't have to preface everything I say with, uh, you know, no offense, or, you know, it, you know, you can go do stupid shit and that's okay, you know, teach his own. I shouldn't have to, I, I shouldn't have to do that, but we live in such a, a sensitive little bullshit world now, it's like, eh, 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 everybody's crying like a fucking toddler, I can't deal with that shit, man. It's called bone the fuck up. Get your dick hard, get your backbone ready to go, and man the fuck up. Cowboy the fuck up, as they say. You know? Your kids in fucking helmets. You goddamn kid can't even ride a fucking bike without a helmet today. There's actual laws. You don't have a helmet, you can't ride a bike. Are you fucking kidding me? You know how many fucking times I fell off a bike and hit my head? <sighs> Whatever. I mean, Jesus, why don't, you put, why don't you put the fucking kid in a hamster wheel? Put him in a fucking bubble. Put, have a little bubble boy. That's what we should be. We should just be the... the we should evolve into the bubble people. Just everybody's got their own little bubble. And they just kind of rub up against each other. That's how sex is going to be in the future. You're going to have these little fucking assholes and these little round condom balls, and they're just going to squeak, 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 rub up against each other, and that's going to be the sex from now on. I guarantee it. I guarantee it. Like, oh, you ogled me. Well, your tits are hanging out. Of course I'm going to ogle you. Fuck you. You know? Like, I'm a fat bastard. My pants came down and my ass is showing. I expect people to see it. Not whether they want to or not. That's a different story. But I'm not going to sit there and say, 
you know, seriously, if, if I'm walking around and my nuts are hanging out, I expect people to see it. I do. I said, you ogled me. Well, yeah, and your dick is hanging out. Or what's left, you know, what's there. Ain't much there, but, you know, your nuts are hanging out. Not that I'm doing it on purpose, but, like, if there's a rip in my pants and I don't realize it, yeah, people are going to see my nuts hanging out. You, you, you can't blame somebody say, yeah, you, you, you looked at that? Well, yeah, it's, it's right there. How do I not see it, you know? You got the you got the breasts of, like, cantaloupes. I mean, what the fuck? And they're hanging out. What am I supposed to do? How do you not see something like that? Even if you're trying to be, like, all goody two-shoes, how do you not... I mean, a woman's got tits that big. How do you not just look at that? You know? I mean, seriously. I don't get it. I don't know. It's like, you know, you're, you're running off 400 pounds. Obviously, people are going to look at you and say, oh, you're 400 pounds. It's like, oh, oh, you, you shouldn't you, you shouldn't body shame me. You're 400 pounds, motherfucker. There ain't no body shame. It's just the truth. It's just the truth. Your tits are hanging out. I'll look at your tits. I want to see your tits. Your tits are hanging out. There they are. You know, I'm the, well, I'm the bad guy because your tits are hanging out and I want to see them. Oh, I'm bad for that? Fuck you. Give me a break. Anyways, let me get back to what I was talking about. The whole Garden of Eden thing. I want to get back to that because I got off on a tangent there. Because we, we, we have to determine what it is exactly the fallen angels and Satan and all that bullshit are trying to do. They're trying to bastardize every single solitary thing God created. Like they're doing right now. Like I was just said a minute ago. Like instead of having Indiana Jones have it be a good movie, it's stuck him in a refrigerator and now he's turned him into a woman. No. No. They try to bastardize everything that is good. Oh, God, I swear to Christ. Now, the simple fact, because this is something that, that has kind of intrigued me. There's theories that there were a group of people. Actually, there's theories that were like, I think number six or seven. Um, that there were other races and cultures before us that basically wiped themselves out. We're like number six, I think, is the theory. Which, technically, if you take the flood into consideration, there's at least one and two. Um, like there was a culture before us. <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> but the Bible does sort of suggest that because we know that under the right circumstances, DNA can leach into the field, into the soil. We know that, and the Bible says that God created us from the dust. Well, what is the dust? It's dead skin cells. So, is it possible that God? And let's take all the hocus pocus bullshit out of God. Let's just say it's an alien, and he's a terraformer with like some sort of organic 3D printer where it's like okay he's got the the DNA sequence and he just starts mass producing whatever it is and he can tweak it at his whim which is not that far fetched I mean we probably could do something like that in the future at some point I mean seriously why can't we do a 3D printer that can actually mass produce organic material I think we can actually do that to some degree so if we could get the DNA sequence and actually have it perform in a certain way, we could actually start creating life. I don't see why that, uh, you know, I don't know. That doesn't seem very far-fetched to me, but I don't know the details. I mean, obviously, from an organic point of view, there's probably a few setbacks, you know, a few things that are that have to be adhered to. But once you, once and if you can get over those hurdles, you probably could do something like that. But let's just say you've got an advanced dude, like a gazillion years into the future, who's got technology we don't even dream of, can do that shit. Okay. So you have this alien dude who comes and says, oh, let's take some samples of what's here. Okay, so we're either, you know, chimpanzees or, or, or gorillas or something. or I mean, we're only a few chromosomes away from a fucking cow anyway. I think we're like one chromosome away from a cow or something. Or a handful from like a, a dolphin. So yeah, we're not that far off. All you gotta do is tweak this shit a little bit. If you know what you're doing and, and able to actually do it, you can literally create almost anything. But explain why there's so many different varieties of animals. Because basically somebody just went and said, oh, let me just move this around, move that around, blah. You know, almost like in a video game kind of sense. Almost like a character creator, in a way. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is. 
No, again, it's a little different, obviously. It's a little more complex, obviously, because, like, you could create some weird fucking shit that just kind of, like, you know, moves around on a video game, but actually they do it in an organic way so that it lives. Okay, that's a little bit different, but actually, really, is I don't know. Because if you're talking a gazillion years into the future where they've got the, all that technology... What difference is it if it's if it's like a little character model on a screen versus okay now this is organic, that's just the next step up. I mean, I don't know, but it could explain why we have this this you know evolutionary bullshit concept where it's like oh this had an had a had like a third horn coming off its dick and this had a third horn third horn coming off its asshole and you know blah 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 and it's all these weird and just creepy looking creatures and dinosaurs and, and these fish with like these human teeth and the, the angry evil rawr, teeth and shit like piranha teeth and like rawr, and had these evil fucking eyes that look like satan's dick looking at you like rawr. okay you you know what i'm talking look at you google some of that shit google like scary animals and scary fish and shit okay you know and shit, we're doing it right now we are crossbreeding animals right now. this is an entire zoo right now no joke where they're they're mass producing like things that are supposed to have spots and now have stripes and things with stripes have spots and it's fucked up. I mean we are literally engineering animals and stuff. It's creepy. It's fucked up and it shouldn't happen. It shouldn't be a thing. But we're doing it. There's legitimate things already. They are cool looking creatures because they do look like they're out of place. It's weird. You know. Like you'll see a leopard with stripes instead of spots and it's just it's like, your mind looks at that and says, that's not right. Like, they're so cool looking, some of these things. I swear to God, they look so cool because your mind recognizes the fact this doesn't look right. And that is what's so cool. Yet these things are, are real. They're, you know, fucked up, man. It's legitimately fucked up. And if we can do it, you're telling me that... uh an alien being or a Satan, which is te well, technically Satan is an alien. He would be an alien being. He came from a different place to this planet, so he technically would be an alien. So if you want to take all the hocus pocus bullshit out of it, Lucifer is an alien. Just call it what it is. He's he is an alien. You know, so and then he took what was here and bastardized it. So. I don't know. Because it makes me wonder. It Because it acted like Satan, the serpent, couldn't get into the garden. But could they have left the garden and come back? Could they have left the sanctuary, let, gone out into the world, and then come back? I don't know, that's weird. I mean, think about think about that. Especially if the garden was in a time dilation field, they could literally plant a seed, step outside the boundaries, for even a second, one second of of normal space time, go back because it well it'd be slower, so it'd actually be the opposite way. Like they could actually leave and plant a seed, go back into the garden for a second, and the tree's like you could literally watch a tree grow and die within seconds while you're inside the time dilation field. So, I don't know, that's kind of cool when you think about that. So, they could literally have been watching the entire universe almost like in one of those uh, montages where you see, like, the day and night. Like, like literally, the sun would be spinning. A brr, brr, brr. Like, it'd be like, day, night, day, night, day, night, day, night. Blah, 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 and everything would just be going super fast. Oh, that'd be so freaky, dude. Can you imagine the universe living, living in a universe like that where you can actually see that and it's happening in real time? It isn't... Because, like, we watch these... these uh, uh, what are the what are they called? The uh, where they speed it up, whatever the fuck it is. Um, or they'll show it like at night, and you'll see the sky, you'll see the moon go across the thing. You know, <sighs> imagine that in real life. That's creepy, dude. I don't know, man. But again, it, it depends on how slow time actually was. Like if time stopped, then. I don't know, man. Because what 
I think would have happened <coughs> is you would have had your initial dilation field and then a select group, a select amount of space, whether it's feet, miles, whatever, yards, feet, whatever, outside of that would be going a little bit faster. And then it would, it would because basically it would be the further you get away from it, depending on the, the range of the field itself, things would be going at different pace at different speeds. So if you're in the center, if you're standing next to God, you were basically dead dead stopped in time, yet you move outside of the garden, let's say a couple feet outside the garden, everything in the universe or everything outside that would be going a little bit faster. You go maybe 10 feet outside of that, it goes a little bit faster, so on and so forth. So you could be in the garden, so it, you wouldn't necessarily see it go day, night, day, night, day, night, no, 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 necessarily, because there was time distortion that would spread out. It would, like, again, the further you get away from it, you know. Like, if you could see, like, let's say, I don't know, let's say a mile away, then yes, it would be day, night, day, night, day, night, day, night, day, day, day. But, the surrounding area would be the surrounding area outside of the time dilation field would be a little bit slower. So I don't know how that would work because it's like you would see through that you'd see the sun in the moon, so it might even go a little bit slower because you're seeing. See, I don't know how that would work. I don't know how that would work. Like because again, you'd be almost stationary in time if you're right next to God. Again, assuming the whole light thing and blah, blah, blah. If you were standing next to God, you would be almost stopped in time while the universe around it is going. But, again, five feet away from God, ten feet away from God, whatever the, the field was, and it could be, you know, because we don't know how big it was, necessarily. We don't really know how big that field was, or how far he could expand. You know, we don't know that. Because light can go a long way. You know, so who knows? It could have gone a mile. It could have gone 20 miles. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. Well, anything outside of that time dilation field, it wouldn't be going as fast as, let's say, a mile away. Like, if you're a foot outside of the time dilation field, it's not going the same speed of time as a mile away. Right? Am I wrong on that? Because it seems like... It's almost like a black hole. The closer you get, the more shit slows down. So if you're on the outer rim of it, time is different than if you're 10 feet from the actual hole itself. Now, if you're 10 feet, you'd be dead, but you get my point. The time field would change. So if you're looking, if you're on the outer rim looking in, you'd see it kind of like moving a certain way, but if you're right in there, Everything else is just kind of like... The entire universe would be going at a regular clip. So, I mean, we see that as an actual thing. Um, I mean, it, it, it is an actual thing. So it's not like this is far-fetched. So I don't know. I mean, it's weird. But... What if... When Cain left... When was was kicked out. He went to his city, because we know the fallen angels were exist. They existed. They were there. They weren't in the garden, as far as we could tell. They were separate from that, so they basically were just running around the world doing God knows what. They could have taken stuff that God created and completely tweaked the DNA. Or created their own, even. Who knows? Now think about that. Because you say to yourself, why would God create dinosaurs? If God exists, why would he create dinosaurs? I don't know. What if he didn't? What if Satan created them? Because think about it. God, it seems like God would create things that were decent in order. Satan would create the opposite of that. Now an interesting fact is that we have certain aspects of 
decency in nature where it's like, okay, the spider eats the fly, the you know, whatever. The bird eats the spider, the cat eats the, the bird, the dog eats the the cat, Obama eats the dog, you know, whatever. The bear eats Obama, whatever. The whole thing. It goes in a natural cycle. But to what extent? I mean, if we were to break it down to the very simple, most simple aspect, what do you really need? You probably would need some sort of bacteria to eat away. Like if somebody died, you'd have to have bacteria to eat away at their, their flesh. Um... I don't know, you might need ants or something to eat away at them, or, or some bugs to eat away at them. And then you need something to eat those. And something to eat that, you know. So, I don't know, you, you could probably kick it down to maybe 25 things. Because, essentially, the universe, or the, the world, the Earth, would have to recycle itself. So, like, if somebody died, let's say a person died, a full human being died... They couldn't just sit there. They would have to deteriorate. So you need reasons. For, you need things to make that happen. Again, you know, different, whatever. And things would eat it. it. Would eat the body and eat the flesh. So worms. You need worms. You know, so on and so forth. You need something to that effect where it's like it would. But again, you could probably break that shit down to probably 25, 30 species of, of, of living thing. And you could probably have it all, but yet we've got millions of living things. So it's like, what the fuck? I mean, the idea we're discovering things today that we never even knew existed. How, how is that possible? How are we discovering new species of things that never existed before? Which means either somebody's updating the, the codex, and up, updating the... Uh, the uh, animal registry in a, a fucking holographic universe or, you know, CERN did collapse multiple realities on top of each other and these animals that existed in another reality are popping into ours or we're popping into theirs, well, either or. Now, granted, the world's a big place, but it ain't that big. I mean, especially you got Google Earth and shit, it ain't that big. Dude, wh I'm sorry. No, there are places we, you know, people just don't go, but give me a break. I mean, come on. We we know enough. I could see maybe, like, ocean creatures that we don't know, because let's be honest, 90% of the ocean is not even, not even, uh, I mean, forget the final frontier. I mean, you got the fucking oceans. That's, that's where, you know, a lot of that shit could uh, be coming from as well. So, I don't know kind of fascinating when you think about it, really. Um, but yeah, I mean, what else is there? It's like... Could Cain have been seduced by a fallen angel taking on a female form? Could there be bastardized human... Because, I mean, think about it. What better way to do it than have half human, half... And we know the Bible even says that, that the fallen angels had sex with the women. I mean, think about that. So if they had sex with women, you're telling me they couldn't have mass-produced? Somebody, basically somebody bit the bullet and, and turned into a female and basically had Cain mass-produce a bunch of assholes? You're telling me that's not a, a thing? That couldn't have happened? I mean, they, the fallen angels technically prescribe to a, a male concept, but that doesn't necessarily mean they have to, you know, I mean, think about that, now, if you've got an entity that can, that can manifest itself in a physical form, whether it's in an, another dimension or not, or, again, it's waves and particles are outside of 180 outside of ours, then, like I said, they can exist, and they can manifest themselves, that's creepy shit, though, when you think about it. That is. It's creepy shit, because what else can they turn into? Like, some people say that they can turn into certain objects around your room and shit. Now, I don't know about all that, but... 
That's some weird shit, man. That's some weird shit. Now, I mean, think about it from like a biblical sense. You got idols and stuff. Now imagine if they were turning into idols and stuff. And the idol, they basically gave certain idols different like life. Gave it, gave it like, you know, turned it, turned inanimate objects into, you know, animate ones. I mean, think about that. That's creepy shit right there. So I don't know. I don't know how any of that stuff works. Because if you could turn into basically anything you wanted, you'd have to be able to manipulate matter. You'd have to manipulate it at the basic construct, and I don't know how that would work. Because if that's the case, then we should have the power of the mind to manifest certain things. Some people suggest that we do have that power, we just don't we don't know how to use it. Now if we do have that power, that's kind of cool. Now I don't know to what extent. Now we can manifest certain things. We can. I talked about it with that one computer. Like I had no computer. I had no money. All of a sudden I no granted it was a used one. It was 300 bucks, but I didn't have 300 bucks. All of a sudden now I've got a computer, you know? Or actually it's 200 bucks, excuse me. I didn't have 200 bucks at the time, yet somehow I managed to... Not only did I manage to get a $200 computer, the uh, MacBook, it actually turned out to be fairly decent. I mean, for what it is. And I still was able to get through the entire month budget without really completely... In other words, it, it's like I was almost... I focused myself to be content on the fact, okay, there's $200 which you normally don't have, plus you were able to do whatever else I had to do. So it was kind of kind of cool that way, because, I mean, really, it's just a matter of being content with what you have. So, okay, I got a computer, and I bought a couple movies or something, and I didn't get a lot, but, hey, you know. But no, actually, to be honest with you, I got, I remember that month, and I had... It almost felt like I had more money than I needed that month. It was just weird. No, I didn't have a lot. I was didn't have like a million dollars more than I needed. But so I don't know. It's like now is that just mind over matter versus like actually manifesting something? Like I didn't manifest it. I manifest the concept of it, where it's like okay, I had to order it. You know, it wasn't like. Oh, I want half moon cookies. Boom! Oh, they're right here. You know, it, it wasn't like that. Now, to be able to do something like that, I don't know. Do we have the ability? We'd have to be able to essentially manipulate matter at its at its core, at its at its base structure. Is that even remotely possible? I mean, I don't see why it couldn't. I'm thinking like in a three D printer sort of way. Like, could we? manifest stuff, almost like they do in uh, Star Trek, where it's like, oh, I want uh, Earl Grey tea, and all of a sudden it just kind of makes it in a cup. Now, I don't know if how how far-fetched that actually is, like what you would need. Like I'm thinking like a, a regular printer, like I know you need the black ink, and you need the really good ink, and you need the good paper. Now, if you take a 3D printer... Like, I don't know what the fuck you need for that kind of shit. Like, I see people, they're, they're making guns, and they're making... All sorts of shit. And some of the more expensive ones, I mean, shit, they're actually creating like, actual shit. Now imagine if you could do that on a biological level. Where you could actually create, like, oh, I want a puppy, I'll create a puppy. Now think about that. Imagine 3D printing a puppy. Uh, I, mean, I don't mean like a, a stuffed animal, I mean like an actual dog, like an actual like being. Can you imagine that? I don't know how that would work. It would be kind of cool. Now, you'd have to jumpstart it and, you know, get it working, and I don't know how any of that's... Well, actually, I don't know. You probably could... I mean, would it... I'm, I'm just throwing this out there. Would it be far-fetched to... Would it be far-fetched to create a artificial womb through, like, a 3D printer? I'm talking in organic sort of sense. And create a living thing. Now, granted, you may have to wait nine months... You know, put it in a little bucket somewhere. Is it? Is that something even far-fetched? I don't know. 
I mean, it's probably far-fetched for what we got today, but assuming you could actually take DNA and say, okay, this is the sequence, and here's some, I don't know, random cells, some, uh, you know, whatever, and we're going to implement this DNA uh, code into this stuff, and we're going to set it into motion so it's going to just, like, unfold, unpackage, and create this thing. Is uh, is that far-fetched? I mean, is that even a possibility? I don't see why it isn't. I mean, we can clone stuff, which I know that's a little bit different, but I don't know. Is that even remotely possible? Like, if we could kickstart, like, you take some of these stem cells and, and whatnot that are, are basically blank, and you implement the code, the DNA structure code into that shit, and then set it in motion, I think we could create stuff like that. I really do. I think you could have a 3D printer that created actual life. That would be creepy, dude. I mean, can you imagine that? That would be absolutely insane, and I don't see that as being all that far-fetched. I mean, that's actually less far-fetched than a teleporter when you think about it. Now, I think we could teleport certain physical things, but I don't know if we could teleport people. Because every time you go through a teleport, you're essentially dying. I mean, you'd have to have, like, a cardiac team right there every time you fucking, like, oh, beam me up, Scotty. You know, fuck that. Scotty's going to have to be sitting there with a fibrillator and things and zapping your ass. I don't know how that would work. I actually don't know how that would work. Or it could be... See, I don't know. I mean... Yeah, I don't think that would work because... The energy that we have that is... is Us being alive... See, I don't know. Again, I don't know how that would work. I don't think I'm going to Stargate sort of way where it's like you're going through the Stargate. Like, your consciousness basically stopped at the beginning of the gate, at the front of the gate, and then wakes up on the other side with your physical body that has now been uh, broken down into its base parts and then reassembled on the other side. And your consciousness is supposed to bloop, just instantly jump over there. Um, I don't know how that would work, because if you really think about it, there's a good potential that even if you could reassemble yourself on the other side... You would basically be like, oh, you'd be dead. <laughs> you would need something to jumpstart your shit, basically. And if your consciousness has been disconnected from your body, you'd basically be in a coma. You'd be in a coma and you wouldn't be breathing. Now, unless the consciousness would actually go through the wormhole itself as well and come the other side... I don't know how that would work, man. I really don't know how that would, you know, I don't know how that would work. No, I think maybe you could, if you could even do something to that sense, or teleporter, I think you could maybe send machines through, but I don't know if you could actually send people. I just, I don't know. No. Maybe if you sent them into a different pocket of time and space, almost like a hyperdrive in that sense, where you went th went into another pocket dimension, almost like a wormhole. Well, actually, that wouldn't be the same. Oh, that's what a Stargate is. But you'd have to keep it intact, though, and I don't. You'd have to keep the body intact. Maybe in a maybe kind of like what I was saying with the ship. Like you keep like a, a cocoon where the physical body is. <clears throat> and everything around it is being manipulated. But there's like a safe haven in the center. I don't know. I don't know how I don't think I don't know if that would work. I mean, I guess it could, but I don't know. I think you again, I don't know. Like time travel, that's another thing. I mean, I suppose if you were going fast enough you could maybe slingshot around the sun if there was a 
You, well, you need the energy is what you need. That's basically the problem with all that stuff. You need the energy. So if there was a solar flare at the right moment as you're passing through the wormhole and you went close enough to the sun, I mean, it could slingshot you back faster than before you got before you left. So you'd actually... You'd, you'd, you'd arrive before you left. Which would be weird. It would just be weird. It's like, uh, yeah, you might not want to go. You might not want to go through there right now. You might want to wait a few minutes. Uh, that's weird. Then you technically have to because the other thing. Then it would create a paradox. Now you're talking. Now you're talking serious problems. If I arrived before I left and told myself not to leave, oops. <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like what? Yeah, I don't know, man. That's fucked up. I mean, think about that. You're going to go through a, a, a time thing, a wormhole or whatever. And then you arrived back before you left and said, hey, don't go through there. Now you got two versions of yourself. And you've relayed information from yourself to yourself about don't do this. Now you've literally changed history. Because it's history, because obviously if you returned before you left, it means you you had to leave beforehand to get to do the thing, and now you haven't done the thing. Now you basically created a wrinkle in time, and it's like the wrinkle's going to say, fuck you, and the entire fabric of the universe could implode. I mean, seriously, that's some crazy shit. Now, let's assume it was only like a few few minutes before you left. I mean infinitely more likely you got sent back hundreds of years, thousands of years even. I don't know. But it's kind of fucked up when you think about it. Now, as far as like time travel, I, I kind of like the idea that like if we set up a, a stationary device right now that we could maybe communicate with it from a future point. As in, we're using one device throughout time to communicate back and forth. The only problem is, we'd be communicating with, let's say we set it up right now, we can only communicate from this point on. We couldn't communicate yesterday, week before, 100 years ago. I don't know. I mean... I, I don't know. I, I do think it's possible to maybe send radio waves back in time. Or send... Yeah, some basic shit back in time, but as far as actually sending, like, people, I don't know. I don't think that's possible. I just don't, I don't... I mean, it's theoretically possible, but I don't think it's actually physically possible. Because, again, to go at those speeds, your face would end up in your asshole. Literally, you, you, would, you would literally fold in on yourself, and your face would just melt off, and, you know, you'd be like this big splotch of flesh and piss on the back of a wall somewhere. You know, so it, it is what it is. Um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. But, see, that's the thing. What if, is it possible to, would it be possible, let's take this whole thing with, with God and the, the light and, the time dilation field. What if God was going faster? What if God could go... Well, he is light, but what if he could go faster than the speed of light? So anything in that bubble would actually be going back in time. Is that even a possibility? See, I don't know. That's, that's weird shit. I don't know. That's, I don't want to get into that because I don't feel like... Comp this is already an hour long and I don't feel like thinking about that because... I mean, you know, the Bible says that basically God is outside of time. So, okay. Now, what does that actually mean? Because I want to assume that God, yes, is light, but I think he's also more than that. So what if light is just like the physical representation of what he is? Because if he exists on multiple levels, like multiple dimensions, then, okay, this dimension, he is light, or on one of the dimensions, he is light, 
he could also be very very different on another dimension. You know, like, like it says, God is love. Well, what is love? Love is an energy. Light is an energy. God is energy, essentially. So, I don't know. If God is energy, what if everything that's energy is God? Like, you know, what is in the ether that, that holds our very cells together? Well, it's energy, essentially. It is God. God holds us together, literally. He holds our, our very particles together. You know? Which is kind of fucked up, but, you know, whatever. Because, again, if he is energy, let's say he is the energy of the universe. Which, actually, think about that. Every time you use up, uh, every time you charge your, your phone, <laughs> you're basically stuck on from God. <laughs> I don't know how I feel about that. I mean, can you imagine that we're actually we're actually taking from God? Because it's weird. This is something that's always bothered me. Is that God almost feels like a parasite in a way. Like he's an energy vampire. Like he's an, he's and in fact like, the Bible refers to heaven as the grain of a mustard seed. In other words, it starts off small, and the more you believe, the more the more focus and energy you put into it as just a human being, the bigger and grandiose it gets. Well, that seems like, like what God is. He created human beings to mass-produce, to worship Him, and send Him more energy, and send in just create more, you know... I don't know, it feels weird to me. Like, he only created us to simply use us. Because, I mean, think about all honor and glory go to God. Every knee shall bow. Think about what that means. That means that we have no choice in the matter. Our sole purpose is to essentially just appease him and send him energy and to send him love and to send him glory and honor and blah 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 which is what is all that we think well god yeah god deserves honor and glory but what does that mean you're sending him essentially more energy it's almost like he needs a recharge or he's 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 a glutton for you know more power essentially what it is that's essentially what it is I mean, think about that. He, he stole the keys of life and death. So like, it, it's his determination when people die. Think about that. If somebody's not giving him honor and glory, guess what? They die. I don't know. It's, it's kind of odd when you think about it. But what if he's just an energy vampire? What if he's just like... I'm talking like in a sci-fi TV series kind of way. What if that is what God is? He's just, his sole purpose was to create us, to use us. But, oh, he loves us. Yeah, based, yeah, he loves us because he wants us to, you know, feed his, his, well, his ego, I guess, in a way. Ego probably wouldn't be the same concept, but you get what I'm saying. It's that, you know, why does, why does Donald Trump hire the people he does? Because they ball hug him, they nut hug him. And they cup his balls. See, they say what he wants to hear. Oh, Donald, you're so great. You're so great. You know, you can't have a freaking uh, uh, military briefing without having a word of Donald Trump every 15 seconds. Oh, Donald Trump, Mr. Trump, Mr. President. You know, they, they have to cater to him like he's a two-year-old. It's the same idea. That's kind of disturbing when you think about it. It is, actually. It's very disturbing. So I don't know how, I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about all that. Now, I'm not trying to disperse God, but it's it that is how it comes across. You know? It's almost like... And also, it, all, it kind of feels like he also wants to propagate and, like, expand his, his being. Now, think about it. He lives in our hearts and minds. Well, there's 7 billion people. Now, not all of them are going to be on his side, which is essentially just wasted energy, which is probably why he's going to destroy us all. You know? I mean, think about that. He created us 
See, I don't know, it's weird. It's like... If he is an energy being... And you have to assume Satan on some level is also an energy being. I mean, we're all energy beings. We all have energy. But I mean it in the sense of, like, in a literal sense. Um, or, you know, to some degree. Then that means there's neutral. So it has to be good energy, neutral energy, evil energy. And both sides are kind of fighting for the neutral energy. So God creates a bunch of people, which will... Because... Energy is neither created nor destroyed, so you're creating a bunch of people out of the neutral energy, and a lot of that neutral energy will focus back onto him. Some will go to Satan, some will go to him. See, I don't know, that seems weird when I think about that. I almost don't even want to ponder that, because it's just, that's fucked up. Because again, at the end of the day, every knee shall bow, blah, 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 Satan will be completely destroyed, so on and so forth. So even though Satan may have more, like said, out of the 7 billion people, he may have more people focus. Because the thing is, people aren't focusing directly on him because of the different religions. It's not like all that energy is going to Satan himself. God, however, the energy, for the most part, is going to him, even on, even on a level of, like, God versus Allah, you know, but again, then you got Satan in there, so it's like instead of worrying about Jesus, who's supposed to be God in a, in a physical flesh, now we've got, let's throw Mary in there, let's throw Mohammed in there, let's throw Buddha in there, let's throw this one and that one in there. Now you're focusing it off in different directions because you got to get people to believe different stuff. Like somebody not might not believe in Jesus, but they believe in Buddha, which I don't really understand, but that's just me. you know. Or some people might believe in Mary, but not... Uh, Muhammad, you know, because it's Satan trying to take away that energy from God, trying to take away his power, trying to take away his, because he's essentially milking at the nipple there, and it's just weird when you think about it. Like I said, it literally feels like he's trying to gain power, like like obsessive amounts of power. Yeah, I don't know, that's weird. That is a weird way to look at that. And if that's the case, and it's just, it almost seems petty, I don't know, man. The whole spiritual world thing just freaks me out because you're you're talking about potential assholes. And I'm talking God, too, in this, as being an asshole. I'm talking Satan, God, the whole nine, angels, demons, whatever. You got these un unseen assholes. I'll just call it that straight up. You don't know what their agenda is. Okay, the angels' agenda is to serve God. God's agenda is to siphon power from people. And Satan's goal is to bastardize anything that God does. So think about the logic. And we we're literally caught in the middle of all that. We as human beings are caught in the middle of all that. Now think about what that is supposed to mean. Instead of me just waking up and having a normal fucking day and just trying to live my life, you can't. Because you've got these outside forces that are trying to fuck with you at every twist and turn. I'd almost rather be left alone, and it includes God himself. I'd almost rather be left the fuck alone. You know? Now, the problem is, you know, the way it's set up, oh, gee, you know, you get what you would, you know, be careful what you ask for. It's like these people who, like, they don't want to believe in God. Well, what do you think hell is? Like, why would God create hell? Well, why not? Because a bunch of people who don't want to accept God, if God is interwoven in every aspect of our life, then guess what? Now imagine, okay, for example, God is light. Let's take God out of it. Let's just say you're living your normal life. Let's say you're Stephen Hawking or whatever. You're just living your normal life and you're trying to understand the universe. Okay, well, what if I said to you, you need to acknowledge the light because it's important. And he says, no, I don't want to acknowledge the light, a.k.a. God in this sense. So, okay, well, then guess what? If the light is an actual thing that's important and you're 
shitting on that, well then guess what? If there is life after death, where are you going to go? You're going to go to a place where there is no light. Because the light is like, no, you rejected me, fuck you. Now, I don't know how I feel about all that, but, you know. Like, seriously, how many times would you invite me over if I rejected your wife and called her a fucking whore? Like, right here, if I say, hey, you fucking slut, whore, bag, whore, fuck, fuck, fuck. How many times would you invite me over to dinner? Like, if I walked up to your wife and just punched her in the fucking tits and, like, you're a fucking whore. Every time I saw her. Every time I saw your wife, I, I, I literally just balled up my fist, popped her both in each titty, boom, boom, and said, fuck you, whore. How many times did you invite me over to dinner? I mean, seriously. It'd be kind of funny. I'm not going to lie. That would actually be very funny. I'm not going to lie. That actually is kind of funny to me, but... <laughs> but and I don't mean, like, punch her hard. Not like, not like you know, where you, you punch somebody so hard in the chest that their heart kind of palpitates a little bit. I mean, just kind of like, psh, 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 you know. I'm, I'm talking like, 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 like treat her titty as like, like a, a punching bag. Like, pew, 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 pew. You know, like a round bag. One of those roundhouse bags. You know. You're not going to invite me over to dinner very often. That's all I'm saying to you, you know? So why should God be really any different? If you're going to reject Him, so if God is light and you reject Him, then you reject light. If God is love, then you reject love. If God is all these things and you reject those things, then guess what? You deserve to be in a place that has no love, a place that has no light. Well, I don't know. Think about what hell is. It has no love. It has no light. Those are just two attributes of God. So, I mean, think about that. Think, I mean, that's kind of fucked up, really, when you think about it. Like, if you're an atheist, I don't know, that's kind of freaky to me. Because, I mean, again, if energy is neither created nor destroyed, and we are energy, then guess what? We do live outside the body. We live outside the physical world. We will continue to exist. Our consciousness will continue to exist. And... Now, is it in limbo? It could be in limbo. I don't know. It could. Jesus refers to it as a deep sleep. Okay. Well, what happens after that? I don't know. I don't know. You know? Lazarus awoke and is like, hey, what the fuck happened? What's been going on? You know? I don't even know if he was aware of what went on. He's been dead for three days. So, the consciousness is still there, even though the physical body wasn't working, the consciousness is still there. It may be put in stasis, it may be like put on hold, hit the pause button, waiting for the rapture, but what happens after that? Like, I'll be honest with you, I don't think, I really don't think Gene was saved. I don't think my aunt was saved. I don't think she believed in Jesus in that in that regard. I could be wrong, and I hope I am, but... Okay, what happens then? Then you have the, the white throne judgment, or whatever the fuck it is. Where all the people who didn't acknowledge God, they basically get called up. Almost a, almost a second rapture, in that sense. They're going to be, you know, taken before God's going to be like, Nah, hey, fuck you. You rejected me, fuck you. You know, they're going to be thrown in, in the pit. And they're going to be thrown into hell. And there's going to be weeping and gnashing of teeth, and people are going to be crying, oh my god, my loved one's going to hell. You know? It is what it is. Because the Bible does say that, you know, God will wipe our tears, we'll turn, we will turn, God will wipe our tears, and we'll remember no more. Because how are we supposed to enjoy heaven for eternity when we know our loved ones are in hell? Now, I know you probably have a different view on that, but, you know, it is what it is. Hi, Mr. Boots. He's a good boy. He's been a good boy lately. Yes, he has. He's been a good day. He's a good friend, huh? Yes. Me daddy's old cuddle bear. I'm gonna bring your daddy some kisses and stuff. Me daddy's old cuddle bear. Yes, you be daddy's cuddle bear. <laughs> Anyways. <sighs> I, you know, I don't want to talk anymore. I, I just, fuck you. Fuck, fuck you. Fuck science. Fuck it all. I don't even care. Just stupid. The only science I need to know is I'm hungry and I want to get something for lunch. You hungry, Mr. Boots? Yeah, he's cocking his head back and forth. He's hungry. <gasps> Mr. Boots is hungry. I don't know what we're going to do for dinner. Today's Saturday. We're going to go Saturday, Sunday, and Monday because I ain't going to the store until Tuesday. Can we find something for dinner? <gasps> you want to find something for dinner, Mr. Boots? I'm tired. Of, well, I'll tell you one thing. I'm tired of hamburg patties. Holy shit. 
Especially that beef. The beef wasn't that good. I don't know. I got like 32 of them. Well, not, I don't have 32 left anymore, but I had a package of them of like 32, like hamburg patties and a case for like $18 from Walmart. I don't know, man. I'm out of bread. So I basically have hamburg patties and no bread. So that's that's my life for the next three days. Ooh, great. Uh, you know what I could do? I could take one of those hamburg. I could take two of those hamburg patties, fry them up with a little of that seasoned salt, and put it on one of those pizzas. Ooh, I mean, I put a little hamburg on the pizza. Oh, daddy. Oh, daddy, spank me on that one. Uh, whatever. But what I do tomorrow and Monday, I have no fucking clue. And I'm broke too, dude. I'm broke as fuck. I'm broke as fuck. But God of War is coming, so I'll be. I, I got that. I ordered out yesterday, day before. The yeah, day before was Wednesday. Ordered a sub. Man, eighteen fucking dollars for a sub, and I ordered a fucking large. And those sons of bitches gave me half. And you know how I know it's half because there was no end. You know how the, the little round end. And you cut it in half, and you, you see like where they cut it. They basically cut because what what they do is they take they have big big rolls and shit. So when they cut it in half, they usually quarter the fucking thing, and you basically get two halves. Well, what they did is well, no, excuse me, they have it, and then they end up, with this one they quartered. In other words, I got. Basically two of like one half. I got like a half. Whatever. I got half the fucking sub for like eighteen dollars and I was really pissed off by that. Ow, that's my throat you stomped on, mister. Why are you digging into my throat? Ow Dude. Dude. Will you get out of Daddy's face? Hey, get in my face and yawn. You You are a wicked, wicked little man, mister. You're wicked. You're lucky you're cute, or I would have beaten you a long time ago, Mr. No, no, stop kissing Danny's hand. Stop that. Stop that. Give me a kiss. Mwah, my little baby, little Owen. Oh, I should have named you Owen. Mommy, little boy, Owen. Oh, yes. <laughs> I gotta watch that again. I wanna watch Throw Mama from a Train again. Owen, oh, my little baby boy. <laughs> you're ready to tell them to take me away. No, Mama. <laughs> I'm writing a story for class. <laughs> I gotta watch that movie again, dude. <clears throat> Anyways, what am I talking about? I'm 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 fucking rambling right now. So you know what? Fuck you. I'm done with this clip. <laughs>